At ease disease, today on the channel, the much-anticipated G.I. Joe Classified, Sergeant Slaughter. The spirit of the warrior will run forever! Welcome everyone, Kyle here. Welcome back to the channel for the long-awaited, much-anticipated G.I. Joe Classified, Sergeant Slaughter figure. But remember, for all your Sergeant Slaughter figure needs, make sure you're hitting up Big Bad Toy Store. Link in the description below. And he is currently in stock shipping now if you need your Sergeant Slaughter fix. And I'm hopeful today we can get down to the age-old question of what is a Nemesis Enforcer? I always have to throw that in for you long time fans of the channel about my interaction, my day with the Sarge, my day with the Sarge. But Sergeant Slaughter, one of the stalwarts, one of the big names of the G.I. Joe brand over the years. Of course, he was a wrestler before. Uh, obviously, he came into the G.I. Joe universe, went back to the wrestling universe, then back to the G.I. Joe, and then to Valiverse, and back to G.I. Joe. He's a guy that gets around old Sergeant Slaughter, always hustling, that's the way it's got to be. Sergeant Slaughter, one of the favorites from the G.I. Joe brand of kind of the second incarnation of the cartoon time frame, of course. His time in the movie fighting Nemesis Enforcer, whipping the Lieutenant Falcon into shape. Uh, just quite the guy. And it's always interesting where your Sergeant Slaughter fandom is. For me, obviously I knew him from wrestling first, but I was always a much bigger Sergeant Slaughter fan from the G.I. Joe universe than the wrestling universe. So I don't know if you guys are the same way as me. Or maybe it's even for you, I guess, sound off in the comments down below. But he was always a bigger deal to me in G.I. Joe than he was in wrestling, uh, for whatever reason. But of course, we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging, we're going to talk about it, we're going to unbox it, we're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. we got some comparisons to do at the end of the video, as we always do as well. Now, I should say this is a fan channel exclusive. This Sergeant Slaughter is not going to stores, so uh, it's an interesting one. It is another one of those deluxe figures. We'll see if it feels deluxe to us. Obviously, this one's a little bit different because Sergeant Slaughter is different than a Gung Ho or a Flint or even a Cobra Commander, as Hasbro owns the likeness. They own the G.I. Joe uh, property, whatever you want to call it. They don't own Sergeant Slaughter, so they have to pay, much like Star Wars, much like Marvel Legends uh, with the Hasbro team, they have to pay a fee to be able to use those. Same thing with Sergeant Slaughter. So maybe that's a little bit of the uh, increased price on this, uh, being a fan channel, all that kind of stuff. But there's no doubt in my mind that if Sergeant Slaughter went to traditional retail, he would move off the pegs. There's no doubt about it right there. Let's get down to it. Let's get old Sergeant Slaughter in the plastic-free packaging. Kamakura was the first one. Sarge is number two. So it is what it is. I don't know. I'm opening this. If I was a Minon card collector, I probably wouldn't be too happy. And if you guys have followed along on the channel, the That's So Hard to Say Goodbye series we do on the channel, I got rid of all my Minon card. And my, I was going to be a Minon card completionist in the G.I. Joe Classified label or line. Uh, and I changed my mind. Once they went plastic free, I said the uniformity has gone. Uh, the fun is honestly gone from the Minon card. So I ditched that whole Minon card set. Saved me some money. I'm reinvesting that into the Super 7 line of G.I. Joe. Uh, hopefully shipping soon, fingers crossed. But it is plastic-free packaging. Not fun. If you're wanting an autograph of Sergeant Slaughter on this, I don't know. It is what it is. But it is the packaging now. We get all kinds of different depiction of all the good Sarge right there. G.I. Joe down below. Sergeant Slaughter, of course. Got the peg hook up top. He is number 53 in the line. Uh, they have said by the end of 2023, we will have 100 G.I. Joe classified figures. So working our way that way. I do like this artwork on the side. I love the fighter jets and the glasses looking really good on Sarge right there. And on the back, not a whole lot. A lot of uh, gibberish down at the bottom. Uh, this is kind of what tells you what is actually inside the package because if you look at the front, you're like, I have no idea what's really in here. This breaks it all down for you right there. So without further ado, let's break down the packaging for the good Sarge here and see what all the fuss is about because, oh, let me tell you, there's been fuss. Just like a Nemesis Enforcer, there's been some fuss. Uh, but there it is. Nothing else going on. See you later. Goodbye. So we do get the little uh, Sergeant Slaughter case here. We've been seeing this with the plastic-free ones. They put all the uh, accessories and things like that in here, which I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. I kind of like it. Uh, you can use these as little dioramas, little pieces. You can have your Joes firing behind them. I think that is a, a neat little feature. Uh, it doesn't take away the fun of you know the plastic bubble we used to have, the plastic prison. But I guess he gets the job done enough here. And we got a little of that. See you later, Spider-Man style. What else we got in here? 
Nothing else. Okay. And you got to be careful too with these baggies. You never know. If you're not careful, you might accidentally throw something away. Uh, it's always a dangerous game. It's a dangerous game like a like a young king diamond with the dangerous meeting. That's what it reminds me of. But we're going to get these things out. It looks like we got his whistle. Always appreciate the Sarge and his whistle. Oh, the whistle. One of the most deadly gym teacher tools there is, of course. And Sergeant Slaughter adapted that himself. See you later. Goodbye. Uh, everybody loves a good whistle, especially if you're Fonzie from ECW. We all remember Fonzie and his whistle. Uh, leading Sabu in RVD. Oh, got the glasses. See you later. Goodbye. I just don't like these little cardboard prison things. It's just a lot of work here. See you later. Goodbye. And then we do get this, which is always really cool. I've said it before in other videos. I think they could save some money. I, I appreciate what they're doing with the G.I. Joe Cobra logos on here. Uh, but, you know, pricing of figures is getting so expensive. Most people, if they're to this point, they're not keeping it like this. This is going in the garbage. So save money. Let's make these wrappings universal between Marvel Legends, Star Wars, everybody else. Get a cheaper deal on the figures. Uh, give that money back to us in the figure form. Uh, it's probably uh, uh, not going to happen, but it's fun to say. See you later. Goodbye. All right, all that's out. And then we get the uh, cardboard prison, cardboard coffin uh, for Sergeant Slaughter there. The good Sarge wrapped up. Got the old twist ties going on. Uh, he almost looks like, uh, what was it, that uh, Sir Arise, Serpentor Arise. We all remember that. One of the greatest G.I. Joe mini movies. I, I don't know what you would call it, but story arcs ever, The Rise of Serpentor. See you later. Goodbye. Uh, the Sarge was all roped down. They were trying to get his DNA to put into Serpentor, of course. We'll never forget that. All right. Now we got Sarge out. We got all the accessories out. Let's break this down. and Let's start with the hands. Let's start it off. And man, Sergeant Sauter, he didn't come to mess around. He came with two fists. He's ready to throw down. Somebody gets out of wine. Somebody gets out of whack. He's got to punch somebody like Cobra Commander in the face. Hey, he'll do it. He's got that there. We do got the old point. Everybody loves a point. Uh, we got the old point there. What a great uh, deal is the point. I always love a good point in the pictures. Uh, go to Pro Wrestling Tees, you get the point t-shirt. Uh, but there it is. Two pointing hands for Sarge. Just a must. A must to have those with the Sarge. And then we get two other really good ones. We get two like kind of maniacal grabbing hands. Like he's getting ready to choke somebody to death or something. Once again, very cool. Big hands for Sergeant Slaughter. I like that a whole lot. And then we get two trigger hands here. Uh, so he can hold his weapon. It's interesting the Sarge comes with weapons as uh, primarily, I'm trying to think in all the Sergeant Slaughter G.I. Joe figures over the years, I don't think he's ever come with uh, firearms. He's always come with a stick, uh, whistles, hats, glasses. Has he ever come with a gun? And I don't know if we've ever seen it. Yeah, he's fired guns in the cartoon. What am I saying? He's done that. Uh, but we do get the big old rifle here, and it looks like we get a little clip on here that we'll have to figure out where that exactly goes to it looks like it probably goes on the top it's always weird with some of these weapons with the joe sometimes i like that the magazines there's a nice word that can come out and stuff but sometimes i feel like it's just an uh, a way to lose some stuff and this little scope i believe that is uh, i don't f i feel like that could have just been sculpted in and we would have been just fine we didn't need that as a separate piece that we could pull in or out maybe that's just me i don't know but a nice blaster rifle here. I always love it when they give us a little extra color. We got a little brown on the handle, a little brown up there against all the black. Really makes it feel a little more high class, more high class. We do get the big old blaster for the Sarge. Uh, what else we got here? Of course, we do get his whistle. Uh, no, Not a lot of movement, anything like that. It's not a real whistle. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, unfortunately. I, I wish it did, but uh, it goes right around his neck, of course. Sar What's a Sarge without his whistle? What's a drill instructor without his whistle? That's the key. Uh, we do get one of those magazines. I guess I had to put that in there, and that fits right on the bottom as well. So you really build out that gun. Build out that weapon however you want. So we have that. Of course, you've got to have his drill sergeant hat. Looking good. Nice brown. Got the black rim around it. Got the gold emblem on it. All day long, Sergeant Slaughter. That's what that one is. Very cool. Then we get his little, uh, oh, what do you call these things? It's like it's a club, some kind of club, a staff club, you know, instructing club. It's, it's an interesting one, but of course he uses this. He doesn't just carry it around. He'll use it on Falcon, getting out of order in the movie. Uh, but very good. Another new uh, accessory here in the line. Got the nice gold on the top, the brown handle, uh, the wood down here, and then kind of a little string that's plastic. Looks really good, like that a lot. Then, of course, the iconic Sergeant Slaughter. To me, Sergeant Slaughter without sunglasses just looks weird, and he's got to have the mirror aviator style uh, big glasses here. That works for me as well. And then a very cool one here is you get the minifigure, the Sergeant Slaughter minifigure. 
very funny is we've seen these if you go to your local Target, your Walmart, you go to the card department where your Pokemon cards are, your hockey cards, hockey, anybody like hockey cards, wrestling cards, baseball cards, things like that. They have the G.I. Joe mini brand deals there. Uh, they have those so you can kind of see these guys compared to each other. I thought they'd be about similar size. These are a heck of a lot bigger. Uh, but the figure does come out of the plastic prison, which is really funny. It's got a cardboard backing here with the G.I. Joe. I think that is very cool. I do like this. This is one of those things that could be very easily lost. And I have Duke right here, the minifigure Duke, and he is double the size of the Sergeant Slaughter. So, uh, yeah, it's not quite the same, but it is kind of cool. It is weird. It's kind of breaking the fourth wall a little bit on Sergeant Slaughter because, you know, Sergeant Slaughter didn't know he was an action figure in the G.I. Joe cartoon. So it's, it's a weird dynamic with that. I, it's cool as a throw-in, but it just doesn't make a lot of sense, at least to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing something. I don't know. But let's break down Sergeant Slaughter now. Let's get down to business. Monkey business, as some might say. Uh, let's look at this Sergeant Slaughter. And right off the bat, I mean, it definitely looks like Sergeant Slaughter. Obviously a much earlier, younger Sergeant Slaughter. He's got a full head of hair. It is short, but it is a full head of hair here. Uh, so this is really early 80s Sarge, probably even before his time in G.I. Joe. But also in G.I. Joe, you know, they made Sarge a little bit bigger than he actually was. And that's what all good action figures cartoons should be. It should be uh, bigger than life. Life is what it should be. And that was Sergeant Slaughter to a T. Big head on the old Sarge here. Got the nice chin. Got the beautiful mustache right out of the 80s, of course. Looks like the Sarge all day long. I would not be mistaking this for anybody else. So a good Sarge. Of course, head goes around side to side, back and forth, up and down. He's got some big old traps going on. Uh, he loved his shoulder shrugs in the gym. He wasn't messing around. He's got those big old shrugs uh, going to get those uh, boulder-like bowling ball traps on him. Looking good. He is a jacked up dude after all. He's got to fight Nemesis Enforcer, the fight for his life. Even if he doesn't quite remember who Nemesis Enforcer was, at least at the time I talked to him. He has seen the movie a couple times in the last year. I got to think he knows all about Nemesis Enforcer now. Uh, but moving on, the arms do go all the way around. Bicep side to side. Very tight joints on this guy. Double jointed elbows. Unfortunately, we do have pins in these elbows. They are not pinless. Hands removable. Hands back and forth, of course. Got a little black bracelet not removable that is painted on he does got some butterfly action in the shoulders not deep deep articulation but just enough to be dangerous uh, we do get the ab crunch loud can you hear that right there waist side to side back and forth looking good with that he can do those big old sergeant slaughter splits i mean he was known for his splits game uh, he would impress doc and lifeline around the medical unit a lot on his uh, stretches i believe somebody can fact check that if they want of course you got the drop down hips on these like we see with all the classified figures we got the thigh cut double jointed and what do we have here double jointed pinless knees on the good sarge like to see that got the boot cut and got the ankles back and forth side to side up and down good army boots down here for the old sarge got the nice fatigues in the pants got the nice white belt with the gold buckle Got the black wife beater. Man, he's off to the races. He is truly off to the races. I'm going to put this whistle over his head. That fits perfectly. A little bit stiff. I wish it had a little bit more pliability to it, but it's it's good. It's good. I'm going to put the glasses on. Now, I'm hoping these glasses stay on. We all know about glasses on action figures. Uh, I really wish sometimes they were sculpted into the hat. We saw that a little bit. I think it was John Morrison in the Mattel line. Uh, we saw some of that. I liked that idea. But it looks like... Just got to play it right. Put the hat on. Oh, yeah. And that really fits the look. You get the glasses. You get the hat. You got the whistle. You got Sergeant Slaughter all day long. He looks good. He looks real good. I like this one. I, of course, I knew I would. I love G.I. Joe, as you guys know. But it's so cool to get a classified series Sergeant Slaughter in hand. Looking really, really good. Does he fit on a ringside collectible stand before we start doing some comparisons? Let's see what happens here. And, of course, this is the Mattel stand, and he fits like a glove on the Mattel ringside collectible stands. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself on some Mattel ringside stands. Uh, but he looks good. He looks great. Now we got to compare him to some other Sergeant Slaughters. And the one I was really interested in comparing him to was, of course, Valiverse. Now, Valiverse had the rights to Sergeant Slaughter, released two figures. I uh, guess was it early this year, end of last year, we got these Sergeant Slaughter figures. And Sergeant Slaughter, of course, he's going to go to whoever pays him the most. And I think his contract came up with Valiverse. Hasbro swooped in. 
Obviously, Hasbro probably paying bigger dollars. He went that line. But you can see the height comparison, size comparison for the Valiverse. Uh, a lot of their figures you can smoke and mirrors in with the classified line. Sarge is a little smaller to this one, but Sarge is a little bit bigger as far as the classified figures. At least he feels that way in hand. We'll compare here in a second. But there he is against the first Sergeant Slaughter. Of course, we unboxed this one and the other Sergeant Slaughter on the channel from Valiverse. If you want to check those reviews out, go ahead and check them out. Go for it. Uh, let's compare him here next to the true leader of G.I. Joe. There's no doubt in everybody's mind that Flint, he leads by example from the front line. You know, a true leader will not do anything he wouldn't make his men do, and that's Flint at the end of the day. A true leader. A true leader. Flint. But we see him next to Sergeant Slaughter. I don't know, is that right? We all know Flint would beat Sergeant Slaughter in a fist fight. We all know that. It's true. Flint is the greatest Joe of all time. Uh, but you can kind of see that height comparison there. You can also see Flint. See, this works a little bit. This is in my mind how these two would be next to each other. Uh, Sarge looks a little bit bigger, but I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it in the classified line. So you can see that. But how about another big Joe? Uh, Gung Ho, of course. And Gung Ho and the Sarge are basically the same size. This is the Walmart exclusive, Hasbro Pulse exclusive Gung Ho. The Gung Ho we all really wanted at the end of the day. Uh, and him and Sarge are really the same size. Actually, Gung Ho feels a little bit bigger. He feels bigger in hand when you hold him. But I think that does work because Gung Ho's a big dude from Louisiana. He's not messing around either. Uh, so we got four Joes right there. You can kind of compare the heights between them. And then we might as well grab a wrestling Sergeant Slaughter as well. Uh, this is an amazing one here. This is a must-have for everybody's collection. The Ultimate Edition G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter, uh, much bigger. The Ultimate Editions and really the Mattel wrestling line does run larger than Hasbro lines uh, for Marvel Legends, G.I. Joe Classified, etc. But you can kind of see that difference there. But that is a heck of a difference between those three. Uh, you can smoke and mirrors this one in with your Classified line. I truly believe you can do that. Uh, but this one probably is playing all the hits because it is authentic G.I. Joe Classified. And that's what we're really looking for at the end of the day. So there's a little Sergeant Slaughter Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified. Long anticipated. It's going to be interesting to see where they go with Sarge from here. I don't think they start, signed Sarge just for one. I would not be shocked to see like a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive next year. Maybe they put the old USA logo, give them a little of that color like the old figure. I could see that coming here one of these days. Also, the driver, Sergeant Slaughter, from uh, the Warthog vehicle. That was always a really cool Sergeant Slaughter figure. I really enjoyed playing with that one when I was a kid. So I'd love to see the Warthog edition one. Uh, Slaughter's Marauders, we know we're getting those figures. So you got to think we're going to get a repainted Sergeant Slaughter in that. They're going to milk the Sergeant Slaughter mold. They're going to milk all they can out of this one. It's just up to us to decide if we want that many Sergeant Slaughters in our collection. But stay tuned for more. I guarantee we're going to have a few more coming at us probably sooner than later but what's your thoughts on this slaughter picking it up passing long game waiting for a different one you're good on slaughter figures let me know in the comments down below of course you made it this far don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on the old notification bell as we got videos every single day of course including every gi joe figure you know i'm all in on the joes so make sure you do subscribe to this very channel. Hit the notification bell. Give the video a thumbs up. It does help the channel. Don't forget about Patreon where you can get videos like this much earlier than traditional YouTube. Bonus content, exclusive content, monthly Q&As, pizza reviews, you name it. A lot going on over there on the old Patreon. And best of all, you do support the channel. You can also support the channel at Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget about social media. Sir Paul 64 is where you find me on Twitter. Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for the great Sergeant Slaughter, I am Kyle, and I'll see you guys all real soon.